StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. So the main event, Chris Jericho, Eddie Kingston, it was billed as a barbed wire everywhere match. And as noted, when they bill a barbed wire everywhere match, you know you're going to get is barbed wire everywhere. There was barbed wire around the ropes. There was barbed wire all around ringside. The ring announcer, Justin Roberts, had a barbed wire microphone, which I don't think I've ever seen before. And uh, Jericho comes out as the pain maker. The heels are put in the shark cage. Ruby's there at ringside controlling the shark cage. And Which you knew was going to be trouble. You knew there would be point. trouble, yes. So uh, they killed and each they other. And they also pointed out that she had she had the key as well. Yep. So, uh, I mean, Jericho bled immediately after getting hit with the barbed wire microphone. And then Kingston is bleeding shortly thereafter and... I don't know if some or all of the barbed wire was real, but absolutely some of it was, because they're stuck to this barbed wire. Jericho's hair is stuck in it. His shirt is stuck in it. It's getting punctured. I mean, there was barbed wire in this match. These dudes are bleeding, beating the hell out of each other. And then, of course, Ty Conti runs out, and she attacks Ruby Soho. Anna Jay runs out, supposedly to make the save, but then she turns on Soho, and her and Ty Conti are back together, which was set up last week when Ty did the interview and told her she needed to do better or whatever her line was. So Anna J gets the controls. They lower the shark cage, and uh, Ty gets the key, and she can't unlock the door. And she tries, and she tries. I'm like, take the camera off her. But they won't. They just show her trying to get this. So finally she gives the, the key to one of the heels so he can try. But then... I think it was uh, Matt and and Jeff, or they're already climbing their way out of the cage. Well, they, they went they went through the, they went through the cage because yep. they knew that this was way too goofy, and they needed to get to and they needed to get to the ring. And quite frankly, I mean, they got out. I mean, they, they it, got out. And they wouldn't have been able to get out if it were suspended, but they lowered it, so they all get out. They hit the ring. They start beating on Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, Ortiz, Claudio. They run out. We got a wild brawl all over the place, and uh, Kingston hits the back fist after everyone's gone. He uh, gets a near fall. Then he grabs out what they called razor wire, and he wraps it around his arm for the stretch plum. And as Jericho is about to submit, outruns Sammy Guevara. First time he's been on the show since being tossed off the cage. Super kicks Kingston. And then, because uh, Kingston had wrapped the barbed wire around Jericho for the stretch plum, Jericho's got the barbed wire wrapped around him. He hits the back elbow. And he gets the pin. So uh, at that point, there was like seconds left of TV time. So Kingston very rapidly grabbed Jericho, threw him off the apron onto a barbed wire board, and then Jericho sold it big as the show went off the air. So Kingston... Jericho did a stretcher job after it went off the air. I'm not surprised. It was, And there was another spot. I can't remember what the spot was. And, uh, you know, maybe it's fine, but... They did some spot, and it looked like he got a barbed wire barb to the nose, because he's checking his nose afterwards, and he, and he was. Bleeding. I was afraid. I was afraid it was the eye, which which you know. It, he sold it kind of like it was his eye, but then after whatever near fall it was, I mean, he was definitely checking like the bridge of his nose, like maybe his nose had been broken or there was a puncture wound there or something. But god damn, this match between this match and the opener, this is the most violent pro wrestling show I've seen, and I don't even know how long. Yeah. Golly. Yeah. Um, it was something. Um, I mean, the main event was wild as hell. You know, it was what it was advertised to be. Um, I know a lot of people were, you know, upset thinking that Kingston should win. And I guess, like, in a month we'll know because it feels like if... I mean, it feels like the idea is to build Brian Danielson and Jericho. And if that's the idea, then then Jericho should win. But if that's not the idea, then then Kingston probably should win. Although, you know, I mean, Kingston did win the first singles match. So, um, 
You know, I mean, people were definitely looking for this. As, you know, it was billed kind of as the finale, and they wanted him to win the program. But, um, you know, if Danielson is going against uh, Jericho, and that's a big match on the pay-per-view, then, then Jericho probably should win, have won here. You know, um, I know, and rightfully so, you know, people were upset about the interference because it did feel very WWE, you know, where you have this match, you pretty much promise no interference and you have nothing but interference. You know, it's kind of like, okay, so the shark cage certainly means nothing because we've already, you know, shown that it means nothing. But I guess that shark cage probably is only going to be used once, maybe next year, maybe next year they'll do it and uh, people will forget or something. But uh, um, I mean... It was a wild. It was a wild show, um, and like ne you know, next week they they announced two matches, and it's um, Rosa against Yamashita, and uh, what was the other one? It wasn't it was uh, Ricky Starks and Danhausen? Yeah, yeah. Um, ho hopefully, they announce some real big stuff in the next couple of days, because man, that's. That's not it, you know. I mean, Rosa Yamashita um, will probably be good, but it's like nobody knows her. And uh, Ricky Starks and Danhausen, it's a match, um, you know. I mean, Danhausen does get over, um, but I don't think people necessarily want to see him in matches. I think they just want to see him do the shtick. I mean, maybe it builds to um, Ricky Starks and Hook, um, which you know that would be that would actually be very interesting because Hook's been kind of. Well, they you know, did tease that uh, Hook should be in line with for a title match. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. So I mean, if, if Dan House is to build for the Hook thing, it makes all, that makes all the sense in the world. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.